You can install Linux on your computer for nothing. It's a completely free operating system. Just download it and it's yours. Linux is free. It's an argument that is often brought up when recommending Linux to newcomers. And sure, why not? Linux, as in the kernel, as well as most distributions out there, are free. But it is also not the whole story. Let's talk about it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's video where we are going to talk about the hidden costs of running an open source operating system based on Linux. As I mentioned before, most distributions like Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Fedora, Ancharo, Sorin OS, as well as their base distributions are free. Sure, there are also others like Red Hat Enterprise, where this is not necessarily the case. But these distributions aim for a company environment and provide professional support for the businesses who use them. Anyway, this is not why I'm making this video. And before we go into the hidden costs of Linux, here's a quick disclaimer. The things, problems or basically anything I tell you today are subjective and my personal experience. That being said, let's move on to the first topic of today's video, your hardware. While Linux is something that works on many devices, it does not automatically mean that everything works with Linux. This of course depends what hardware you have, and especially if you were a gamer or a content creator on Windows previously, chances are that not everything will work on the Linux. To be fair though, most devices will run on Linux one way or another, but they are lacking the right software for it. If you are a gamer that likes Logitech gear? Well, GUP is not available on Linux, so I hope that your mouse has an onboard storage to remember its settings. If you bought a Blue Yeti X for content creation, a widely used USB condenser microphone, and you used some presets, well, then you're out of luck. Sure, peripherals like that still work, and there are even some third-party tools out there that can customize them, but especially newer hardware like my G303 Shroud Edition might not be picked up yet. Hardware problems like these can occur on many different things. Got a capture card? It might not work if the custom software is missing. Go XLR? As soon as it loses power, the configuration is gone. See what I mean? The most basic and in my opinion worst take on this situation by some in the Linux community is just don't buy gear that is not 100% compatible with Linux. And yeah, while this holds true to a certain degree, how can you know that issues occur if no one's tested it? And two, the more important one, most people are coming from Windows or macOS and already have bought the hardware. In my opinion, I think it is a stupid take to bash people in that they should have gone with AMD, that they should get rid of their gear and start all over again. Because even if they do all that, what if they simply don't like the operating system itself? Are they just going to return the bought items or what? Getting hardware for Linux, especially in the content creator and gaming space, can get more expensive than Windows very quickly. For example, I got a Revelator IO44 to connect my Rode ND5 microphone to. Why did I choose this particular interface? Well, it saves my configuration on the device itself. But since there's no driver, the audio mixes don't work on Linux. Well, what would be a working alternative for this problem? <laughs> well, good luck finding one without going into professional gear, which can cost you up to thousands of dollars. And yeah, before you type anything in the comments that audio routing is possible on Linux, it is also possible on Windows and nobody's doing it. So just, just saying that. And there are actually several reasons why I don't really recommend this. One, it can introduce latencies. Can, right? And two, it can be a hassle to set up, especially when there is no real software for it. So yeah, buying the appropriate hardware for Linux can get expensive really fast the more you rely on it. Number two, the software. This one is a tough in my opinion, since it heavily depends on your workflow and the programs you're used to. If you use Photoshop professionally and you're using very specific features that are unique to that program, then chances are that Linux is not for you. The next closest thing to Photoshop on Linux is GIMP. And it is also really powerful. I've been using GIMP for years now. And when you get to know it, you can create basically everything that Photoshop can. The thing is though, that this might require some plugins or a complete overhaul of your personal workflow. GIMP is slightly different because it is not a Photoshop clone. It is an alternative. The same goes for video editing software, the Office Suite, or basically everything that comes from Adobe and Microsoft. 
DaVinci Resolve, a powerful but also proprietary video editor, which provides a powerful alternative to Premiere Pro and After Effects, is also available on Linux. It offers a free version, which is more than enough for a, well, less Hollywood sort of production, but the Linux version falls short when it comes down to codecs. For example, the Linux version fails to import MKV or MP4 files, as well as videos which use AAC as their audio codec. And the same applies for exporting videos. Why? Well, because of licensing. Typically, these codecs cost money, and they are usually implemented in the operating system itself. Since Linux is provided for free, these licenses are not provided and, depending on the program, are not available there. Sure, you could use a different editor, like Kadian Live, that supports them, but depending on the complexity of the videos, you might be running into certain limitations. But there is also another solution. Let's take DaVinci Resolve for example. If you really need those codecs for your production, then there is always the possibility to just go ahead and buy the studio edition. That's that. So let's move on to number 3, gaming. Yeah, I'm making this a topic. And I will not be talking about game compatibility here, because I've made some videos about this already and we're not going to cover it. Yeah, I know, anti-cheat is problematic, especially on older games, and some game developers strictly refuse to enable support for it. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Bungie. But the thing that bothers me the most right now is the lack of a Game Pass alternative. Now, of course, this is not a Linux problem in this particular case, since, for a comparison, you're not going to play PS5 games on an Xbox, right? But it is something that I want to remind you of, especially if you're a newcomer. If you are a Game Pass user, then you can do two things. Upgrade to the Ultimate Edition to get access to cloud gaming, or you try to rebuy as many games as you can on Steam, if they are available. Buying games in general is not as easy on Linux than it is on other platforms, because you need to be really careful for which platform you buy the game. And of course, I'm not talking about Xbox, PS5 or PC, but I'm talking about the different game launchers, since a native game launcher compatibility is not really given at this point. You can install most launchers like Ubisoft Connect, Epic Games and Origin on Linux, but there are some problems with them, especially when updates come along. I've talked about a fix for update loops in this video right here, so if you encounter any issues, make sure to check it out. But coming back to the Game Pass, I wouldn't recommend rebuying games that are in the pass just yet. I believe, even though this is just pure speculation at this point, that Microsoft might actually be trying to bring the Game Pass to Steam or Linux, if and only if they continue with their we want everyone to enjoy our games policy. Microsoft, especially in the gaming space, has always tried to reach as many customers as they can. And this is also exactly the reason why they ported games like Ori to the Nintendo Switch. I really hope that the Steam Deck is successful enough for Microsoft to consider it a viable option. Maybe. Just maybe. And yeah, that's about it. So in conclusion, switching to Linux on my personal system, even with an Nvidia GPU and my, well, weird microphone setup, it was still fairly easy. Sure, the performance is not always up to par with Windows on my Nvidia GPU, and I cannot do mouse configurations or hardware audio routing. But overall, everything works. Just be careful if you want to try Linux, because a single bad experience can ruin this operating system for the rest of your life. That being said, I really hope that I could give you some insight in my personal experiences. And not gonna lie, moving on from now is not really much different than I would on Windows. Whenever I want to upgrade my PC or, well, this setup right here, then I just need to look out for a small few things. So yeah, as I said before, nothing really changes. And that's where I'll leave it. So if you've liked this video, then make sure to show it with a like and even a sub. I'm also currently doing an Ori and the Blind Forest one live run. So definitely make sure to check out my live streaming channel. And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.